So I think I need to uh, pick it full screen and that would be the way to go ahead, right? Uh, so if I've made you the presenter, so you should be able to move through the slides using the arrows at the bottom of the okay. slide area, you should see left, yeah. right slides. Uh, yes. And if your mouse is over the body of uh, the slide, we will all see a little red dot uh, where your mouse pointer is. Perfect. Okay. Yep. So, uh, thanks, Dan. Uh, hi, hi, folks. Uh, this is Kanchan, and today I will talk about building a uh, fast path to and mini storage device. So uh, the the whole talk is is at high level. It is uh, divided into three parts. So first, we will uh, look at what is NVMe generic device and why do we have it. The second one would be about turning the ITAS uh, uh, async, and uh, the third one would be using uh, the async IOTIL and uh, uh, and uh, uh, building a fast uh, NVMe pass through. I am not calling it async because it is little more than async. So the word here is during pass through. So this this would be the outline and uh, and yeah. Before that, before we get into all that, so uh, I need to uh, I feel the need to uh, to have to add a thank you note. So. The first one is for the IU ring for being around and being uh, extensible. And uh, to the maintainers, uh, Jens, Christoph, and Keith uh, specifically, and, and the mailing list for all the directions and the feedbacks uh, that we have received so far. I, I can't imagine this work being possible uh, without all this. So let's uh, start with this uh, uh, with this screen over here, which shows a block device, which is NVMe Geo N1. And if we look at the capacity of it, it shows size Geo. While this device is is around 12 GB of size. So what is happening over here is that uh, uh, the kernel did not like something about this device, and it decided to create a block device with with uh, zero capacity. And uh, there are other cases when when uh, when a block device can be marked as read only or it can be marked in, as as hidden, and the reason is that uh, uh, that the block abstraction is subject to conditions and rules, which makes sense because uh, because uh, uh, I mean generally it happens when 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 basically kernel finds a device which which may be having a feature which is probably too new. Uh, to be supported, it could be too uncommon to be supported, or maybe it is. It requires, let's say, too much of you know, churn in the code, and maybe it doesn't really make sense to support it. But then, uh, but the 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 bottom line is that that we may be having. Uh, uh, I mean, the outcome of is 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 this is that we may be having a device which uh, which is ha having a block interface, but it's not usable, uh, and. Uh, uh, the example here, why it happened over here is the is because this particular device was having a LBA format, which is 4KB plus 8 byte, uh, while the other one was was recognized fine, but the first one did not. And it can uh, it can also happen when we when we have new device type, new command set types like uh, types like KB in in some GNS devices, per, perhaps. So. Uh, the uh, when when we have uh, such such kind of uh, uh, situation, so uh, the block interface essentially fails, and uh, it's uh, it's it's reasonable. It's it's fine to do that. Uh, so, but in order to uh, uh, in order to be able to use the device, what we what we propose here or what we actually have now already in the kernel is is a is a new kit on the. Uh, we don't call it new bit on the block, but we call it new bit on the cat because this is a cat interface. What you see over here is NG0N1 and NG0N2. So this is what we refer as NVMe generic device. And it's it's a cat device. So if we if we look at the the 
the big picture over here at the top uh, about the uh, about the kernel we we see three uh, interfaces the first one is uh, file io uh, the second one is raw block io the last one is the spdk one and we can uh, we can call it a uh, kernel bypass path uh, and uh, the third one which is shown by green color over here this is this is the path that we're talking about over here generate device path so um, you could see that if we look at in the in the kernel this is having a care interface and nvme would be supporting it uh, so we have we have the same for scsi as well as scsi generate device uh, and now we 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 have uh, added this in, in the NVMe as well. So it's a per namespace care device uh, stream uh, from 5.13 onwards. It's always available, not subject to rules. And uh, similar to SPDK, it is, uh, it is lean. Uh, I would say uh, devoid of abstractions uh, or and devoid of the rules basically. Uh, and unlike the SPDK, it is an kernel path. And uh, this could be useful for, uh, for trying out new features. And that's, I think, similar to SPDK. Now, if we look at what all we can do with this device, uh, so the first thing is that the NVMe client can enumerate it, it can list it, and it can do all that it can on, on a regular block device. This is also usable over NVMe over Fabrics. If we, uh, if we enable the, the controller pass-through on the target side, and uh, then, then we can see this, this, this device on the initiator and same uh, ng 0 envoy and we can start using it. And as far as IOs are concerned, so application can send any NVMe command via pass-through interface. So what you see over here is, is the F, uh, FOPS of, of this device, and you, you see here the function pointers are for IOctal. So the current transport is via IOctal, which uh, makes it a little less useful. So we, uh, uh, we thought of having a async transport, uh, transport for that, and uh, I, I, I think my, 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 my uh, the first shot that I gave to it, it's, uh, uh, I think it's too trivial to be mentioned over here, but yes, I think uh, uh, I, I tried to plumb it and uh, turns out that Jens had already set about turning the blessing uh, in our urine way. So we will be talking about that uh, in the subsequent slide. But yes, uh, the, the bottom line here is that the future transport for this particular interface uh, is going to be IOUring. I think I will be skipping most of this slide, which is about touch base with IOUring. And for this audience, I think this is not relevant. I only kept this. This is for the sake of completeness here. Maybe only thing which I should mention here, because it is still relevant when we talk about async IOctal, would be the communication interface between the user and kernel. So the backbone here is a, a pair of uh, ring buffers, which kernel creates and uh, uses space maps, submission queue, and the completion queue. And the programming model is that we we pick a the application picks a SQV from SQ SQ ring. It can populate it with uh, depending on the operation. A read, write, or whatever, and uh, it can do the. It can repeat this process. It can pick little more and make a batch basically. Uh, and once the batch is is ready, it can call a IU ring end of system call uh, for the for, for the whole batch, and it can submit it this way. And at some some other point of time, it can read the completion from from CQE uh, from the from the CQ CQ ring because uh, kernel will make sure that. When it when it receives the completion, it will be posting a CQE over there. So um, the programming model is it's just that. I mean, to to put it in a in a uh, simple fashion. Of course, uh, IURing offers a lot more than that, and uh, uh, this has been uh, described in, in 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 other talks in in much better way. I would say. 
so let's get into the async algorithm so we are going to be seeing the user interface of the async algorithm first this is not called async algorithm at this moment it is called using command and uh, it is algorithm like facility yes and uh, the operation code for this is io ring op using command so this is the first thing that application need to do it should use this this op code the second thing is that it needs to use a different uh, uh, different sqe the the layout of the sqe is different this particular uh, sqe was introduced by gens only for for this case so it is called command sqe or csqe in short uh, it's similar to the the regular sqe with a with the difference that it has 40 bytes of free space and this 40 bytes of free space is called payload and uh, uring does not peek into it uh, the idea behind this payload is that the dial user uh, that means application can put whatever it wants to put into this and the output provider which would be in the kernel could be file system block layer or maybe nvme driver that would be operating on this payload so uh, it's kind of a private affair between the iotel uh, provider and the iotel consumer while uring's job would be to to pick it and uh, and uh, transfer it from the user space to the kernel provider the iotel provider i mean and the idea is that Uh, so, so typically, when we think of IOTL, it may require uh, uh, the the IOTL command, which is the last argument over here. It may require uh, some storage, and for async case, we would uh, we would want this storage to be persistent as long as the command does not complete at times. I mean, and when we do that, we could uh, we could use this forty bytes of space rather than uh, allocating it uh, separately. I mean, so we could put. Uh, uh this whole thing in line inside this payload uh maybe the other extreme could be that if it is larger than 40 byte we could allocate it and we could put a pointer of it inside that that would be second way to go about it uh but as i said that there are other other ways to to go about it so essentially it's just between the provider and the uh, uh the user and if you look at the 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 program over here so it is showing that we have a uh, we we basically pick a command uh, sqe actually we call it sqe i mean we we pick a sqe and we start calling it command sqe and then we set up the uh, the the uring command of code into it and then we populate the payload into it and once we have done it then we submit it in a regular way and we also complete it in a regular way so that part is is not changed at all Uh, going further now, we are going to uh, go into the kernel and we are going to see the communication model between the IO ring and the IOTL provider. So here, IOTL provider is expected to uh, implement a new method, which is called uring command. Uh, it's a it's a file operation, and if you could see, the first argument here is a new structure, which is called a struct IO uring command. So that's another container which IO ring is going to be preparing. uh based on whatever information it received in the sqe in the command sqe i mean and uh, this is going to be a cardinal st structure because this would be used for all the communication uh between the i uring and and the kernel i mean the the actual provider so uh if you look at the sequence diagram over here so i uring is going to submit the command by calling this this method uring command and it's going to pass this this container to it now i will provide it it may complete the actual instantly if it does yeah it will say that i'm done and if it cannot complete if it thinks that it needs to do a little more it can say that uh, it can return the io cd queued and whenever it is done uh, when it receives the completion and thinks that i have done all that that was required it's going to call uh this new api which is exported by i uring is called i uring command done and in this is going to return the status which is the second argument over here now once i uring gets it it's going to post a cqe 
uh, package this result and then going to post into CQE and then 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 then, then uh, the whole thing is over. So that's the uh, that's the model over here. Now, if we look at the use cases of it, uh, so the original patch set from Jens, it has a bit of network and a bit of storage. The storage part was mostly to, I think I showed the example over, over there, there was a, there was a IOPTEL, um, BLK, BSG get size, primarily to test things. Uh, while uh, there is also uh, something on the network side, as for stories, I think it can also be useful for, for the file systems user. I, I remember uh, uh, Derek uh, once talking about using it for X, XFS scrub because it is a heavy user of IOTL. Then we see that uh, it can be useful for, for the, for the pass-through path. So pass-through is, uh, is already a lean path to the stories, but but because of IOPTEL, it was, it was not useful. So we see that we could make that path useful by, by, uh, by leveraging that. And in, in the rest of the slides, we are going to talk about that. There could be more things. I think IOPTEL, because it's kind of a catch-all system call and it's, it's being used for a variety of purpose. So there should be more things which, which probably can be, can be built over it. But then, yeah, I think uh, I'll be happy to hear uh, from the from the group over uh, on this. And uh, yes, now let's let's actually see uh, how can we uh, wire up the the urine pass through. How can we move from an IOTEL based pass through to urine pass through? Uh, and before that, yeah, so NVMe pass through. Uh, for folks who probably are too busy to look into this, so, so it's it's like a it's a mixed package. It has its good, it has its bad. Uh, so we see this picture here in the left hand side. So we we already have a bunch of abstractions layer in the kernel. They are stacked upon each other on the storage device, and each one is having its own purpose and and, and utility, and it's great for general purpose. Uh, but uh, one of the side effect of that is that if we have a new device feature on a new interface maybe and we want to uh, make it reach to the user space we have to move all these uh, all these letters of, uh, of uh, abstractions and it it may take some time it may take some kind of consensus building and at times maybe the device interface uh, it, it, it's a, it's a yeah, it, uh, it's a very subjective to, to the device feature I mean, it's not a general statement but but yeah depending on that we may have to uh, when we are trying to move a device interface to the user interface we actually have to craft uh, uh, opaqueness to it so that uh, the, the interface can be used uh, in future also maybe for some other feature and that becomes tricky at times so this eventually presents some challenges for people who want to try out new things via kernel uh, faster so with the pass through we already have uh, kernel already is providing a way to skip all that and uh, there's a way for these new features to be to be consumed in in, in native way at least and uh, with those new features, we do not really have to do a lot of plumbing inside the kernel. We don't really have to build the block generic commands, in kernel users, simulations, user interfaces, which, which are definitely tricky. Uh, and user space can probably start using it, maybe build some, uh, some user space file systems, DB, which, which would be domain specific, yes. Uh, so all that is possible, but then then all that is spoiled by the fact that the, that the pass through travels via blocking IOTEL. So 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 that's the motivation behind turning uh, the uh, the the existing pass through. And now we we see how do we wire up the uh, the async IOTEL into NVMe. So if we look at the current NVMe IOTEL operation, uh, it is it's like a forced behavior, it is a uh, forced sync over a naturally async interface. 
uh, NVMe is uh, the interface is, is actually same like IU ring, right? We, we submit the command into NVMe submission queue. V means host at time T. And the device will take some time to do whatever it's required to do the submission, and then it'll say that I'm done. And then uh, at some point of time when device has the completion, device would be posting it into the completion queue, which again is shared between the, the host and device, right? Uh, so completion is, is, is decoupled naturally uh, at the interface level itself. And uh, currently NVMe driver implements the IOPTEL by, by forcing the submitter go into a blocking bay. And uh, when we move from the IOPTEL to Uring command, it's, it's only about decoupling the completion from submission at high level, just that, no blocking weight. And, uh, but then, yeah, there are things which, which are tricky here. Uh, so one of the tricky thing here is, is what I call a sync update to user memory problem. So at times IOPTEL may be having some user, uh, user specific fields, this need to be updated during completion. It is not just about returning the, the status, but also about updating some, some fields uh, which are residing in the uh, user space. And such, if, if we have such field, at least in the past through, we have, we have that field all the time. So when we have that thing, it becomes tricky to access it when we are receiving the completion and interrupt context, because it's not safe to access those. Uh, so we had to introduce something more there. So thankfully we have the task work in front of the kernel and IURing already has uh, uh, the helper functions for that. So what happens here is that um, the NVMe driver, when it receives the completion in the interrupt context, it knows that it can't, it can't, it can't test those fields. So what it is going to be doing is that it will be preparing a callback function and it will supply this callback function to IU ring. Uh, and the IU ring will, will schedule a task work. And when the task work fires up, it's going to execute that particular driver callback function. So what the, the thing that you see in the yellow color over here, uh, just before that you see IU ring command complete in task. So this is the new uh, API that we had to introduce in the IU ring. And with that, we, we go about solving this problem. Now let's look at the example of a NVMe pass through. So here we are talking about reading from generic device NG0N1. So if you look at the code over here, yes, we start uh, it by of course opening the, uh, the device, we get AFD. Then we allocate a pass through command uh, and then we set it up. It depends on what do you want to do with the pass-through command. We will be setting up for read or write or probably for some other actor like uh, maybe uh, I would say zone management, bad example, but yes. Uh, so yeah, once we have set it up, then we are going to uh, fetch a CSQE. We, once we have a CSQE, we are going to set up the uh, pass-through IOPTIL, uh, that, that pointer that we actually allocated. Uh, inside this this particular uh, inside the payload of the C CSQE, and once we do that, we uh, we of course also tell the <clears throat> the IOPTEL code, which is the pass through IOPTEL code over here, and then we send it down. And uh, and yes, we will read the completion in a regular way, and that would be the way to do a uh, uh, a same pass through read some uh, so this this whole thing of uh, course it, it introduces a uh, couple of possibilities in general and if i talk only with respect to zone devices it's going to be introducing at least two new things uh, one is that it's with this we can actually do a uh, asynchronous zone reset so zone reset currently happens via zone management adapter and zone reset uh, is similar to, to to actually trim operation but then uh, it is it is it is kind of mandatory for for uh, zone devices because uh, with the zone devices the host has to do the the garbage collection and if it does the garbage collection it in order to uh, reuse the zone it has to issue a zone reset so it is no longer optional like trim trim operation so if this is going to be used a little more frequently 
so I think this this could be useful. <clears throat> and uh, the second thing here is that uh, we could we could use uh, we could send the join append command at the at multi QMD. So join append currently is is usable in the kernel, but we do not really have any 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 user interface for that. So this could be one way to 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 issue the join append commands at, at uh, multi QMD. Going ahead, so uh, we now once we think that we have sorted the async one, uh, it's about async. Yeah, of course, it's a, it's a it's a first step. It's a necessary step, but it doesn't have to be the only step um, because NVMe is talking to IU ring, and so we, we feel that there is there's a, re, a room for adding more goodness. IU ring already has a bunch of feature for faster IO. Some of it I have listed over here. Of course, it's not a comprehensive list, but then I think it is. It is the main uh, uh, some of the main items. <clears throat> and if you look at the table over here, so here in Uring, yeah, of course, Uring has all of it. While the Uring pass through, the first two features, register file and SQ poll, uh, they become automatically available with with the plumbing which I which I described um, in the previous slides. While the fixed buffer and async polling, that's not going to be available. Uh, automatically, so we 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 will we are gonna be seeing what what can we do about it. So first is the fixed buffer. So fixed buffer helps because uh, this is about uh, pinning those uh, those user buffer once and reusing it subsequently. So this is going to reduce the the, the per IO cost. Uh, of pinning and unpinning, so this uh, pin user pieces, I mean. And the, the way to do it currently is that we call IUring register. We pin the end buffers up front, and IUring sets up basically it sets up the biovac for for these buffers. And uh, when the IO happens, of course, I need to use a different different core because this IO is is somewhat different uh, than the regular IO. So it's called fixed buffer IO. So it's it will be specifying a new uh, opcode, and then it will also be telling which buffer to be used. It can be specified by index, and uh, that's how uh, IURing currently uses uh, the the fixed buffer intra. And for URing command, uh, we add a new opcode, which is URing command fix. Buffers for the pass through they will be registered with the same mechanism. Uh, and the, the index is also passed in the same way. All and uh, IURing has to do is that it has to make the infra accessible for the driver. Uh, and in the NVMe, we are going to use that infra. So rather than doing a pin and unpin, we are going to talk to IURing, get these, uh, uh, pass the buffer and buffer index. Actually, we pass the URing command here. It has all the information. And then we get the, the BioWeb. And once we get the biovec, we are going to be setting those pre-populated biovecs into bio, and then we will send it down. And that would be the way to to have it up. And uh, we don't really have to introduce a new IOCTL uh, opcodes for this. We could use the same IOCTL because we are anyway using a different uh, opcode in the IURI. So that itself is is enough to to differentiate between a regular pass through and a fixed buffer pass through. And now I am moving to uh, IO polling. And before we talk about pass through polling, let's see what, what do we already have in, uh, in in kernel as far as IO polling is concerned. So IO polling, yes, it's uh, the primary use here is to enable the, the, the interrupt free IO, which could be uh, particularly useful when we have ultra low latency storage devices. And then, then the, uh, the essential way to, to tell the completion that that has been interrupted. Actually, it's, it, it starts being a non-trivial software overhead uh, for such devices. So polling is one of the way to, to have the interrupt free IOs. And what we already have is that we have sync polling. In the sync polling, we submit the IO and we spin for the completion in the same syscall. So it's a submit and spin. And uh, uh, read v2 and write v2 can be used here. We have hybrid polling. 
which is about relaxing the CPU. Uh, the, the block layer has that infra, uh, relaxing the CPU by sleeping in between. So the scheme would be like submit the IO, sleep for, for a while, and then spin it. Try to predict maybe how much time it can take, or maybe user can specify that. But yeah, that's that's all about habit polling. The third one here is the same polling. And this one is about uh, decoupling the polling from submission. And this gives third choice. Third choice, I mean, beyond spin and beyond sleep. Now, application can submit the submit some more IO while, while it has submitted one IO, basically. Or it can execute some, some app-specific logic. And uh, the way to enable this in IO ring, I think IO ring is the, is the only one which, which provides it is to set up the IO ring with IO ring set up pole and all the IO to such ring, they become pole. So this is this is all we have currently in the kernel. What we do not have is that IO tell polling or pass through polling. Maybe it, 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 it never made sense before. And we are talking about uh, having it up now. So this is the way how we can, we can go about uh, having the pass through polling. So uh, <clears throat> what we see over here in the middle is, is uh, per core software queues, which are SCTX in the block layer. They are mapped to the HCTX. And the HCTX, they map to the NVMe submission queue and completion queue pair. So you could see that there are four HCTX, each one is mapped to, to one pair. NVMe at the protocol level, it allows creating completion queue which are having interrupts disabled. And that means that device will only post the, uh, the completion into the uh, completion queue entry into the, into the CQ, but it is not going to generate the interrupt. And for that, we, we just have to tell to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the device that, yeah, create a queue with, with the interrupt disabled flag. So what you see here, the, the green color one, they are the interrupt disabled CQ at the NVMe level. And the blue one are the interrupt uh, enabled. And the same color coding applies when we move up. So the HCTX, the green one, they are polled. Uh, uh, they are called polled HCTX because interrupt is disabled for them. The blue ones are the enabled one. And given all this infra that we have, if we talk about what do we need for uh, for uh, for doing IOPTEL polling or async polling, we have to choose a, uh, we only have to do two steps during submission. The first step is we have to choose a poll at CTX. Uh, and uh, once we submit the command, we go about picking a poll at CTX for it because we know that we are going to be doing a polling for this. So <clears throat> once we choose it, I think uh, you see here there's an orange color box. This shows that where exactly we place this command into the HCTX. Uh, I mean, we allocate a cookie, we allocate a tag. So that's what it is about. So this particular cookie and, and tag, it's going to represent, uh, one could decode it to determine two things. One is the HCTX and another is, is, uh, is, the, is, the, is the command itself in the NVMe CQ. And once we have submitted it, we know that we would require it at a later point of time because completions would be happening at some later point of time, right? So we would store this into the IURing command in the second step and we are done for the submission. Then whenever user wants to uh, read the completion, it will be calling IURing enter and it will say that, yeah, I want to read a completion. And when it does, control comes to IURing, then IURing would be picking one of, uh, one of a, now, pending request so and then from that request it will be picking this queue this this cookie it will be finding a uring command and then it will it will get the cookie and then it will send this cookie to the blk poll function which already have all the logic to decode the cookie into the uh, into the respective hctx and then from that hctx to respective nvme cq and then we go about spinning into that nvme cq either via uh, you know a regular way, classical polling way, or via hybrid polling way. But yes, at some point, once we find the, the completion, we are done. So this is the way to, to plumb the, the sync polling. 
Now, if you look at the table, it looks better than before, but then we still have a um, red mark over here because we have got biogas now. Uh, so recently, this has been added uh, by Jens uh, in the kernel. So it's a in kernel cache. Uh, it's maintained at the bio set level currently. It's not safe uh, for the performance reason. So it's currently for the whole layer path. But for NBAB pass through, if you if you see, we we uh, we almost always do the uh, completion in the task context. So I think that that sorts that uh, applicability issue. So I think we can, if we enable the the, the biogas on this path, we can do it for regular I/O as well as for uh, for cold I/O. Uh, we haven't started looking into it, but but I think yeah. So currently uh, at high level, we we allocate the bio using bio log, but I think it should be it should be possible to move to bio set based allocation for for the sync path and and go about wiring it up. And now let's look at some, some, some performance data. How does this particular interface perform with, uh, with the regular pass-through? So regular pass-through here is shown by the blue color. So that is the IOP1. Uh, in the x-axis, we have the, 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 uh, the QD. And on the y-axis, we have the IOPS and here we are measuring the 4KB random read for a single job. So IOPTEL doesn't scale at all. Then we see the orange one, which is during pass through. It does scale fine. And uh, then the top one is SPDK. Yes, it's at the top. And when we uh, enable the during pass through polling, we can see that we are able to reduce the gap. Uh, we are able to cool it up uh, than how we were. And uh, yes, here device got saturated at QD4 itself. So everything you see is, is converging to this point. And yeah, so this is, this is uh, just a collection of uh, all the things which, uh, which are scattered. I'm just tying it up over here where exactly NVMe we generate devices. So this NVMe client support is also must. Uring command and async IOPTEL infra that is currently under discussion. The NVMe pass through and uh, the async and fix buffer, the patches are already out in the mailing list. And uh, the pass through polling, ha it has not been posted yet, but the, in, in the mailing list, but yeah, the, the, the patches are public currently. But yeah, we need to, uh, we need to polish them up. Biocast is in uh, it's in plan, and yes, I think yeah we are at this stage that that I think I'm uh, I should take the feedback now and see what I'm missing and maybe if there are more ideas to further optimize this path maybe anything for DMA and and things like that. So yeah, this is the last slide. Thanks. Uh, does anyone have any uh, uh, questions for Kanchan? Uh, so there's uh, one question on the chat. Yes, I think I read it. Did you start out with IOPTIL and then move to IURing? If so, what was the performance improvement was observed? So I think if I understood your question right, so uh, the performance data is, is that blue line was for, I think I should just move back. 
so the blue line is for the IOPTEL here and uh, the yellow and the, the orange one that's for urine so I think yeah this is the performance improvement that that is, is trying to show or am I missing your question If it is not answered, please, please ask again. So how fast was this device that you were using um, that caused it to saturate? And uh, do you anticipate faster <clears throat> devices for which uh, we would now actually still see a gap? I think this device was good as far as uh, latency was concerned. I think it was showing around uh, seven microsecond of latency but it was bad at throughput so uh, i think that's why it got saturated uh, saturated fast and we should publish a little more data on on maybe uh, maybe obtain gen 2 so yeah i mean otherwise typically i don't expect uh, uh, you know that, that the device is reaching its peak at at qd4 and it's only 200, I think 220K, right? Something of that sort, right? So as far as throughput is concerned, this was not a great device, yes. Um, so since there aren't, I'm not seeing any other questions on the chat. Um, so what other sort of use cases do you anticipate for this other than this is a new device and we don't yet have the driver integrated into the kernel yet? Uh, do you see this mostly for prototyping, uh, you know, uh, testing new hardware prototypes, or do you, uh, are there other use cases that you can uh, imagine that this might be used for? Because obviously, if the kernel has native support, that's always going to be better, right? Uh, right. It's just that, yeah, that, yeah, it, it may take some time for, for uh, yeah, for support to come up. Uh, and uh, yes, the one of the major use case here is is, is that that yeah, when we have something new, uh, we could uh, we could go about trying it out, and maybe we know uh, before we actually do the plumbing in the kernel inside the kernel, we know how good the feature is, uh, and maybe some applications can also be built. So, you know, something similar to I think all the SPDK users, right? The SPDK based applications, they probably. Uh, I mean, th this path is, is somewhat similar, right? They, 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 those application can probably migrate and you know start using and see uh, how does it work. The thing here is that yeah, so they will be using a ring rather than uh, rather than uh, having a plain uh, plain interface. And I think there was a there was a file system use case as well. But maybe I would like to hear from you. How do you see from 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 you know from file system point of view? And do you see what what Derek mentioned for for let's say for XFS scrub? Do you see that there are some other IOTL heavy user who would want to uh, uh, use it? Yeah. So I don't know if we have any of the XFS developers uh, online. Okay. Sure. And I think, yeah, there, there is there is this, you know, uh, network part as well. So I think I haven't started looking into it that, you know, uh, what is the what is the value proposition over there? But yes, I think uh, uh, Jens would be the best person to answer that. But it, it's there, I suppose he must have, there, there would be use cases as far as network is concerned. But I think I should I should go about checking it. Yes. Yeah. 